So you likely heard about the SMS Audio 400. It has everything. It has a good DAC, a good headphone amplifier, and it is priced just right at 500 US dollars. Today we are reviewing the SMSL EO300. This is priced even lower at 289 US dollars at the moment I am filming this video review and it has a DAC inside, Bluetooth reception even with LDAC, it has an integrated stereo amplifier inside, it has USB input, HDMI arc, optical input, coaxial input, auxiliary input and a subwoofer output. It can do pretty much everything. This is so powerful. So it has this nice new design, which is part of the DO series that we've seen with the DO400 with this more angular cut here with this new type of volume wheel. Actually even have the EO200 Mark II here, so you can see them side by side. So they both look pretty similar. Only that the EO200 has the volume wheel at the center of the face of the unit, while the EO200 has it on the right side. The EO200 Mark II does not have a headphone output and the EO200 does have XLR inputs and a smaller connector for the speaker. On the other hand, the new EO300 has a pretty good DAC inside. And although we are looking at a Cirrus Logic DAC, which isn't the first choice for most audiophiles, the implementation in the EO300 is quite good. It is so good that I'm actually using the DAC input, so the USB input, more than I'm using the auxiliary input. I prefer the sound of its embedded DAC over the sound of external DACs, which is surprising. The unit has two headphone outputs at the front and I couldn't find any information on the website on whether the 4.4mm headphone output should be balanced and in sound it has the same loudness as the single-ended headphone output so I am guessing that it is not balanced. This information is not confirmed officially by SMSL but my best guess is that the headphone output is single-ended on both of the outputs. The volume wheel can be used as both the volume wheel and also to control the inner menus if you don't have the remote or if you don't want to use the remote for some reason the remote is included in the package so should have it and you can control quite a few things from the input so you have to select whether it outputs to the headphone output or to the speaker output it doesn't switch automatically you have to select the input it also does not switch automatically so you select coaxial optical usb auxiliary bluetooth you have to select the input then you can select the equalizer it has eight eq profiles but the two that you need the most will be either direct which is no EQ applied, and you will also be using the super bass profile, especially for speakers where it can sound a bit bright, you will need the super bass to turn it into a smoother, warmer and more romantic, more pleasing experience. The unit has those really long connectors for the speakers, you can actually unscrew them and you can use both the standard banana plug type or you can use the fork type for the speaker connectors. It has an on-off switch and it has an AC or alternative current input. The power input switches automatically between 220 volts and 110 volts and that is quite good because I just burned the fuse today right before filming this video. I was testing the new X-Duo and the drop combination of a tube amplifier and it came set at 110 volts. I plugged it in because I didn't check the voltage and the fuse burned. Happily there was an extra fuse in the package so all is good. With this one you don't have to worry about anything. The HDMI arc input works correctly although I don't really use it too much. And the order in which you can get the best sound out of the EO300 is as such. First is the Bluetooth input. You'll get the best sound using the Bluetooth input. Then the optical input, coaxial, Bluetooth and the auxiliary input. For some reason it seems to do the auxiliary input the worst, while the Bluetooth input seems to sound the best. With the auxiliary input I'm noticing a bit of distortion extra above what you hear on the other inputs, although it generally has a low distortion and they are all useful actually. So the feet are made of rubber, it won't slide on your desk. It is not very heavy, it is actually a bit lighter than the EO200 Mark II, but the display seems to be exactly the same. The most important aspect of it is the sound, so I will say that it has a different sound on the headphone output compared to the speaker output. The two seem to be both controlled by the Infineon chip, but they seem to have a different integration. Likely the headphone output has a few more capacitors on the way, which do change the sound as the sound of the headphone output is quite smooth, bassy, warm and it doesn't have a lot of treble. In fact, the headphone output is so smooth and so warm that even with 
pretty bright headphones like the Hyphiman Heche 1000 Special Edition or the Area Organic, the sound ends up being quite smooth and quite pleasing, which is actually not very expected because you'd expect this to be quite bright with bright headphones. So the headphone output is not very neutral. It is pretty colored toward warmth, pleasiness, sounding warmer, sounding fuller and having a larger but slower bass. The bass tends to be on the slow side, which creates the feeling of fullness, the feeling of chunkiness and the feeling of um, thicker sound, while the treble tends to be on the smoother side and it creates this feeling of relaxation, of a slower sound, of something more romantic and laid back. The speaker output on the other hand tends to be more neutral, yet the bass is still a bit uplifted, it is still a bit slow in character, so I think that is the character of the Infineon chip. The bass tends to be that kind of full bass that tends to fill up an entire room but stick around after the note has been played, it tends to create a quite nuanced sound but a large slow moving sound. The mid-range is very different, it is punchy, forward, it is powerful and you never have to wonder where did the mid-range go, it is always there, the mid-range is always very clean and very crisp. The mid-range is also very detailed, we have a wide sound stage, excellent instrument separation, quite good, also excellent resolution out of the EO300. The treble, even on the speaker side, tends to be slightly smooth, but since most of my speakers are quite bright, they still sound quite bright, so I do think that the speaker output is more neutral than the headphone output. On the other hand, with the speaker output, you can engage the equalizer on both the headphone output and the speaker output, but on the headphone output, I noticed that it tends to introduce a bit of extra noise and extra distortion, it tends to make the sound a bit too forward, while that doesn't seem to happen on the speaker output. It seems to be better configured for the speakers. On the speaker output, you'll get a very full sound, especially if you engage the super bass IQ profile, then you'll get one of the most punchy, deepest, sounds possible, you'll get a very, very warm, very smooth and laid back sound, which will be very pleasing with most speakers. Now on whether it has competition, oh yes, it does have a lot of competition, even from the same company, SMSL. So we have the SMSL EO200 and the SMSL EO300 side by side. I think that the EO200 was made slightly better. It feels more rigid, while this one has a bit of flex in the casing. The EO200 Mark II is also a bit heavier, while the new EO300 is lighter. Both of them have pretty much the same operating temperature. Neither of them doesn't get very hot and both of them are class D amplifiers. This means that they will stay cool as long as you don't feed them a signal. In terms of connectors, we have better inputs on the EO200 Mark II, so the previous generation was better at handling auxiliary inputs as it doesn't have an internal DAC. And on the EO200 we have both balanced RCA inputs and RCA inputs, while on the EO200 it is preferable to use the USB input. If you have a good external DAC it may not sound quite as good as you'd expect, so it is best for its internal DAC. The speaker outputs are more solid on the new EO300, although they both work very well for me, I never felt a difference between them. The power input is the same, we do not have a USB input on the EO200 Mark II. There is a Bluetooth antenna on both, although I do think that the Bluetooth is much, much better on the EO300. So on the EO200, the Bluetooth tends to be quite compressed. It tends to cut a lot of the signal and it tends to sound more limited. On the EO300, the Bluetooth is much better. It tends to have better clarity, better resolution, and in general, it is more pleasing. So if you are looking at having a integrated amplifier with Bluetooth, I would recommend the EO300 above the EO200. In terms of driving power, I feel like the EO200 has better driving power. I feel like the new EO300 is slightly more laid back while the EO200 is more punchy. I feel like the older version was better for power hungry speakers while the new version also has a headphone output and with the headphone output it is able to drive Hyphiman Heche 1000 Special Edition quite well, although the sound is quite smooth and laid back, so you lose something and you win something. You'll have to make your choice on whether you want a headphone output as an extra or a slightly higher dynamic range and higher driving power like the older version had. Both of them are sold by the same company, namely Aoshida store and they are one of the best stores in the world. They provide excellent warranty, excellent support, they have this range of excellent products and Aoshida is actually quite excellent because they are available on Amazon. If you use one of the purchase links in my video descriptions, I will get a penny in return, which will help me still have this channel up and will keep my reviews as neutral and as objective as possible. Aoshida is available on Amazon if you are not comfortable with using their website, but 
at the end of the day, it is still them fulfilling the orders. So I think that purchasing directly from Oshida is still a very good experience. They have those excellent products and I mean really nice products. Both of them are pretty good. I would take the EO200, the older version, if you have a good external DAC and if you want to get the best of your system, while well, I would take the new EO300 for a secondary system or for a system where you don't have a DAC. The USB DAC input is quite good and quite useful. So each one of them does something really good. The number of integrated amplifiers in the entry level is quite high and I will be doing a full written review which I hope you'll be enjoying. I thank you so much for watching and I hope we'll see each other really soon. Bye bye!